Zola Raphael X here with another video. Click on the subscribe button, like this video, leave a comment, all that good stuff. All right, without further ado, let us pray. In the name of the Father, Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedita tu mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, non te tinu mortis nostre. Amen. Amen. All right, greetings to all. Sorry, I have some caulk in my hands. Just was fixing a little leak here in the in the bathroom. Big crack there, just filling it with caulk. All right, so today I want to talk to you all about um, this event that they had in New York some days ago. And it is called the God is Trans event. And this is, you know, another tech on God to depersonalize God and to kind of, kind of make him um, really a fabrication, right? something that we make up. So this is the New York Trans event, uh, the New York event. Um, and this is the New York Catholic Church. So a Catholic church is hosting this. Uh, and again, it's an attack on God to make God trans, to depersonalize him. And, and it's really something satanic. If anyone saw the movie, The Passion, you would see how um, the devil was actually, you can almost say non-binary. You don't know if it was a male or female. I think the actor was a male, though. It is something satanic to not have a sexuality being a body. Now, of course, God has no sexuality because he's pure spirit, right? But we call God Father. Why? Because Jesus taught us to be our Father, and he always referred to God as Abba, or Abba, Father, right? And simply, uh, that's the ultimate reason, right? Because God is, because um, Jesus taught us that God is our Father. So, um, this trans event, obviously, again, is it, attack on God, and it really makes no sense to say that God is God is trans because it would be saying that he's if you're trans, you have to be some type of sexuality um, from one sexuality to the other. So, what was God's sex before, and what is it now? I think it is because there's such a war in the patriarchy. He was male, and now he is he is female. Right? God changes sex. Um, with the whole transgender movement, it really makes no sense when we talk uh, the distinction between sex and gender. Actually, it makes no sense at all that they're just saying, uh, which, which is even more absurd, that sex itself is is a social construct, not that there's a distinction between sex and gender. So transgenderism and transsexualism is, is, is the same thing. So Jesus was male, yes, and God has yes he has been given right throughout the bible he has um there are female attributes god is right there is there's motherly uh, aspects to god but god is father and benedict the 16th said it's actually wrong to call god mother and here are some sayings i want to show um ratzinger says this in his book uh, as pope benedict 16th jesus of nazareth the first one and when he was a cardinal the prefect of the congregation of the defense of the faith he was uh when, when he was cardinal ratzinger so let me show this on this screen something like this a whole bunch of quotes i put together god is never named or addressed as mother either in the old or the new testament right um well the quote before the simplest explanation on why we pray our father and not our mother is because it's been revealed to us in holy scripture that god should be referred to as our father Simple as that. But even if we cannot provide any absolutely compelling arguments, I'm, I'm quoting Benedict XVI, the prayer language of the entire Bible remains normative for us. We make our petitions in that way to Jesus, with Holy Scripture in the background, um, taught, us, taught us to pray and not as we happen to think or want. So, again, this is Christianity is not an invention. I had a teacher one time who was... Uh, he loved modern philosophy, and he said that Christianity is the fruit of the subjective experience of a man, Jesus. <laughs> now, basically, you're saying uh, Christianity it was a fabrication, right? Uh, someone made it up. No, Christianity is based on a reality, 
right? Faith has in a content, what we call dogmatic faith. Catholics, we believe in faith has having a content. You can't, you can't just believe. You can't just um, have faith, right? Um, these need a content. Believe in is a, belief is a, um, to believe is a transitive verb. It needs a direct object. So you can't say, believe, I believe so strongly, right? As in absolute sense, in the absolute sense, like to choose, right? To choose is a transitive verb. It needs a direct object, right? To choose, right? To choose what, right? Uh, it's absurd. So Christianity, we conform, right? We conform. We do not um, make things up. And actually, we have to conform to all of it. If you do, you know, if you're one of these cafeteria Catholics, this shows, this is proof that you don't have supernatural faith. Supernatural faith, the motive is on God who cannot deceive or be deceived. God has revealed this. That's the motive of faith. That shows that we have supernatural faith. If you say, oh, I don't understand this, I reject it. Faith is not based on the intrinsic reasons uh, the, of your mind, right? It's not like you, it's, it's not um, of you understanding it, or else it wouldn't be faith, right? Ultimately, it is God who reveals. And it has its rational basis also, right? Uh, like miracles, the prophecies, all that stuff, you know, even though faith is a gift from God that we respond to. All right, so let's continue here. Some things I wrote. The Ratzinger Report. Oh, here we go. No, here before that, from Jesus of Nazareth. If he wants to be understood primarily in masculine terms, then that is how we should speak of him. To do otherwise is tantamount to idolatry, fashioning God in our image, rather than receiving from him his self-disclosure as the father. Right? No, we want God as mother. But what does that entail? We're going to talk about that. That, that is an anti-Christian um, view. And C.S. Lewis even points to this. Wait a minute. If we're not even going to talk about God as Father, then we have distant ourselves from Christianity itself. Right? Because that's what it essentially teaches us. Right? Jesus comes to reveal us God as, as the Father. All right. So it's wrong to call Jesus Mother. Uh, I mean, uh, God the Father, Mother. That is that is wrong. All right. For this, from the Ratzinger Report, Christianity is not a philosophical speculation. It is not a construction of our mind. Christianity is not our work. It is a revelation. It is a message that has been consigned to us, and we have no right to reconstruct it as we like or choose. Consequently, we are not authorized to change the Our Father into an Our Mother. The symbolism employed by Jesus is irreversible. It is based on the same man-God relationship he came to reveal to us. Right, so this is this is very important to show that God is personal. We have to, right? We have to assign it. Uh, it's kind of like the angels too, in a sense. The angels, as they are portrayed, they have to be portrayed as masculine or feminine, right? It, it is true that many of the angels, Archangel Michael, especially. Well, the other angels are portrayed like babies for some reason, but the Archangel Michael, in many instances. Uh, is portrayed as as very womanly, and sometimes when he's with the devil, the devil's very masculine, and Saint Michael's very womanly for some reason. Um, I guess the the artists want to focus on the beauty, but no, Saint Michael, masculine, right, masculine. Again, this is the war uh, on patriarchy, and this is why there's so much push pushback regarding a God being a father. There's a rejection of it. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth explains: Female goddesses surrounded the Israelites too, the mother deities that completely surrounded the people of Israel, and the New Testament Church created a picture of the relation between God and the world that is completely opposed to the biblical image of God. These deities always and probably inevitably imply some form of pantheism, in which the difference between creator and creature disappears. So. We're seeing this today that as um, they're intimately related, as we fall into more pantheistic mindset, we, you know, Christianity is in, on the decline, we tend to see God as mother, right? And now I don't know if this is a cause or this, it, or this is an effect, but it's definitely related to pantheism, um, that God is fertile, God is mother, God is, is the mother, 
right? That is essentially tied to paganism and the belief in many deities, like Pachamama, for example, the Inca uh, goddess of, of fertility. All right, so let me uh, show this real quick. I think I have one more point here. It must be cautioned that modernity's secular culture that expresses disdain for patriarchy as villainous, that the idea of a female priestly class has already been vetted and rejected in the foundation, foundational years of Judeo-Christian thought. So the man is the one in charge. The man is the one who governs. Right? These are these are manly qualities. And God, right, what us one of the essential aspects of God, yes, is love. Yes, but it's an ordered love. Right? It's an ordered love. How many times the saints uh, have talked about um, love being one of the most dangerous passions if it becomes disorderly? Once love becomes disorderly, then it can, right? Uh, the fruit, the the root of original sin. Well, the whole reason of original sin was disordered love that Adam had towards Eve. So love can make us do. Love is a very dangerous passion, right? Uh, so it can only become virtuous in order. So order is fundamental. God is essentially order, right? And this is a very masculine quality. This is why, this is why the man is the head of the household, right? Women have super, you know, super amount of qualities, but men tend to be, um, by God's gift, tend to be or are called to be, uh, rather, and tend to be also um, the orders, right? The orders, um, more rational more rational um, in the sense that they are the ones who govern. They're the ones who govern. Uh, Timothy Gordon is, if you see some of his videos, really interesting, saying that the basis of decline of all civilizations are when female leadership, right? When females are in leadership, this is the beginning of the end of, of a nation, of a civilization. Right? Very interesting. And uh, surely got a lot of pushback for that, but yeah, there's a, there, there's truth to that because God is is not, you know, he's it's not what God God wants, right? So of course, I think uh, you know most people in again, this is what I think most people in heaven are are women, right? Women tend to be tend to be more faithful too. It, it's interesting, uh, even though Islam teaches that more. Most of the people in hell are women, but I think it's quite the opposite. But nevertheless, men are called to govern, and this is an essential attribute of God. God's governance, God's providence, God is is is, is um, fatherhood, right? which is a person, the father. All right. Well, with this, we end it. God bless you all. Thanks for your time, and um, until next time, God bless.